Okay. Okay. You got it. Um, <clears throat> so, our practice this morning, one thing I wanted to mention, um, I heard just a really beautiful story and a reminder, I think, for all of us during this time. Um, you know, I feel like we're in a little bit of a pressure cooker, like if you're prone to anxiety, well, <laughs> your anxiety is through the roof, right? If you're prone to depression or any sort of um, mental illness, like the conditions that we have right now are um, not ideal, right? And they, I think they're, um, it's been challenging for a lot of us, even, even those that don't necessarily struggle with those things. Um, and I've been listening to this David White um, online series that he's been doing. I don't know if any of you have participated in that, but last week's session, he told a story about his mother who um, uh, at a very young age lost her mother. And from that, and it's kind of a longer story than we have time for, but essentially from that experience, that really opened up her heart for compassion, um, having that experience of loss and grief at a young age for a young girl. And, you know, you can go either way with trauma like that. You know, you can put up your dukes and like harden up, or you can, you can allow it to soften you and open you up. And, you know, I think we would all agree that every human being has had um, suffering and and some things that if we, if we really knew what this human being was going through, we would, we would open up our hearts and be a little more compassionate. And anyway, David White t talks about how his mother walked through her life just assuming that she knew the, the hardships, the suffering, the, um, you know, the trials of every single person, stranger or acquaintance or loved one that she already knew um, the, the conditions. And um, it just reminded me that <laughs> maybe that's a lesson for all of us to, could we go about our day um, interacting with each human being that we encounter, assuming that we knew their sufferings. And so maybe that can be part of our our collective intention for practice today, and we'll do some, some heart, heart work, heart openers for that. So go ahead and find your seat, everybody. You can allow the eyes to close and turn the attention, the gaze inward. And let's take just a few moments here in stillness. Feeling the presence of the breath in the body. Here's a little gem by Leonard Cohen. He says, so I must say it quickly. Whoever is in your life, those who harm you, those who help you, those whom you know, and those whom you do not know, let them off the hook. Help them off the hook recognize the hook. You are listening to Radio Resistance. And you can begin your ujjayi breath if you haven't already. Just that gentle engagement <clears throat> using the muscles at the back of your throat. And on your next in-breath, will you reach and lengthen your right arm up alongside your ears, stretch up as tall as you can go, 
And then let's come up and over into a nice deep side bend, side stretch. With each pose that we work in this morning, I'm going to invite you to turn your heart just a little bit more open, just one degree. <clears throat> so even in this pose, maybe you turn your heart a little more open toward the ceiling, lengthening through the right arm and the ribs and the side body. Good. And then let's go ahead and extend back up. Keep that right arm up, bend the elbow and bring the hand to the upper back, right in between the shoulder blades. Reach your left arm up and grab a hold of your right elbow, with the left hand, take a full breath, stretch up tall. And let's lean again to the left, opening through the tricep and the shoulder. Good. Maintain your consistent, easy ujjayi pranayama. Good. And then make your way back up and release the elbow, take the arms down. Good, and we'll take that on the other side. So extending the left arm up, reach up and lengthen, reach toward the sky, and then come up and over into your side bend. Good, and again, the instruction here with each and every pose is to turn the heart a little more open. Good. Take one more expansive breath here, reaching up and over. And then make your way back up, reach to the left arm and the fingertips, bend your elbow and take your hand to your upper back. Right hand to left elbow. Take a breath here and then give a little pull, a little tug over toward your right side. Feeling into the left arm and tricep and shoulder. Good, you guys. Last breath here. Make your way back up and release your elbow and bring your arms down. Good. Let's go ahead and uncross the legs. <clears throat> bring the hands behind you. Plant your feet. Pull back through your shoulders and your elbows lift up through your heart. Maybe that's where you stay. Or you could lift up the pelvis, coming into a tabletop position. Maybe a little shift forward and back, opening the wrists and the shoulders. And again, can you lift up through your heart instead of the hips or the pelvis? And then release back down to your seat and a couple of windshield wipers side to side. Nice job, everybody. Just finish out this last round that you're on. And then we're going to shift to the hands and the knees and start mobilizing the, the spine through um, movement of cat-cow. So as you inhale, a little bit of a back bend, opening the heart toward the front of the room, lifting through the tailbone. And then on exhale, tuck through the tailbone and round your spine, chin to chest. Good, and go back and forth here a couple more times, opening the heart and then a rounding of the spine, chin to chest. Good, and feel free to explore different movement here. Maybe you wanna send this all the way to child's pose, for example, where you can come all the way through into a little cobra, dropping, <clears throat> dropping the pelvis down and opening the heart. You can work at your own pace, maybe move into some little hip circles or um, moving the hips side to side. Perfect. Take another round of breath here in this movement.
And then go ahead and come back to neutral. Really feel the hands as they root to the floor. Tuck your toes under and lift the knees up into your first downward facing dog. I've practiced this morning. Feel the ground with your hands and your feet firm and rooted to the floor. Relax your head and your neck. Feel that line of energy from the crown of your head up through your tailbone and see if you can lengthen that space both physically and energetically. Like you're getting a, a, little, a little tug, a little pull on the tail. And then see if you might here move your chest, move your heart just a little bit more towards your feet, towards your toes. Not to the point where you're dumping into your shoulders or losing that integrity of the posture, but just a slight opening of the heart. Take another breath here. Good, you guys. And then let's bend the knees, look forward toward the front of your mat and step or hop forward. Anchoring the feet, stretch forward to a flat back, long and lengthen spine. Exhale, fold. Good, do that movement one more time. So inhale, lengthen forward, extend chest and belly away from thighs. Exhale, fold and bring it back in. Good, hang out here for just a couple of breaths. Let your head go. You could always move into ragdoll pose or reach down for your big toes. Just feel this standing forward fold. You can have the knees fairly bent. Take one more breath here. And then let's go ahead and come all the way up to standing. So feel your feet on the ground and extend and lengthen up through the arms. You're welcome to take more than one breath to get there. As you reach the arms up, take an extra breath, reach up through the fingertips, and again, turn your heart a little more open to your own degree and range of motion. And then exhale, the hands come together, heart center. The arms go back up on in-breath, stretch up and lift tall. Exhale, dive forward and fold. Hands down toward the floor. Lengthen to that halfway lift on in-breath. Good, and then hands root down. Let's go ahead and step back to plank pose. I'm gonna hold here for just a moment. Feel the ground strong and lifted through your belly. You can always modify by coming down to the knees. And now you can <clears throat> come to the knees for this, but we're all gonna lower down to the belly through Chaturanga. So go ahead and exhale, lower down. Point your toes so the toenail side is down. Squeeze elbows and shoulder blades in. And go ahead and inhale, lift up to a little baby cobra. And then exhale, lower this back down. And we're gonna do this a couple more times. So again, inhale, lift up, peel it up and away, open the heart. Exhale, belly and chest down. Perfect, one more of these. Inhale, lift, maybe a little higher. Exhale, lower back down, good. Press back up to hands and knees or plank, either one and then to a downward facing dog. Heels toward the floor, root down through the hands and through the palms. Take another full breath here. Imagine your waistline getting lifted, drawing in and up. Bend your knees and look forward. Step or hop forward toward the top of the mat. Lengthen your spine, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Good, back up to standing on in-breath. So ground your feet, stretch up, reach tall, open, and then hands come together, heart center. Good, you guys, arms back up on your inhale, stretch up and lift. This time, let's bend the knees and sit into a chair pose. Breathe here. 
feet parallel. See if you can sit just a little bit deeper, the weight back somewhat toward your heels. Pull both thighs back, sit just a little bit deeper, and then bend your elbow. So coming into a goal post position with the arms. Drawing your shoulder blades down the back, a slight uplift of the chest of the sternum. And then exhale, let's take the arms down and clasp the hands behind the back. Pull your shoulders back, lift the chest. Now, if you have the mobility in your shoulders, let's try to suction cup the palms together. The heels of the hands come together. The elbows are a little bit bent and try to pull elbows and shoulder blades toward one another behind you. Take another full breath here. Good, and then as you exhale, come into a forward fold. You can keep the clasp if you'd like or let it go. Good work, you guys. Take another breath here. Go ahead and release the clasp and bring the hands down toward the floor. Step your way back, plank pose. And you can go directly to down dog from here or lower down slowly, chaturanga. Inhale to your cobra or upward dog, and then downward facing dog on your exhale. Perfect, take your right leg and stretch it back behind you, reach it up. Feel for this three-legged downward dog reaching through those toes. Bend your right leg and turn, open up your hip, so you can point that right knee out to the right. Good, take one more huge breath here. Good, and then step the right foot through. We're gonna come into a low lunge, so ground the back knee to the floor. Let's bring the hands up to the right thigh. Pull the belly back, stay strong through your core here, and then extend and lengthen up through the arms reaching tall through fingertips and through the crown of the head. As you exhale, bend your elbows, so similar to what we did in our chair pose, and shoulder blades down the back, lift up through your heart, through your sternum, keep the inner thighs engaged, deepen into your lunge somewhat, if you can, and then turn your heart, again, a little more open for two more breaths here. Good, you guys, hands back to the floor. We're gonna pick up the back knee. Keep the right knee centered over the ankle, left hand on the ground, and send your right arm up for your twist, twisting lunge. Really push into the ground firmly through that right foot as you open up the heart here. Good, if you wanna take this a little bit deeper, you're welcome to bring the left elbow over to the outside of that right knee or right thigh and move into a prayer twist. Keep that back leg strong and fired up here. For the last couple of breaths, move from your heart, maybe spread the arms, turn a little more open and then exhale both hands to the floor. Step to plank pose. Pause here, you guys. Hold on for a moment. Reconnect to your breath. Shift the weight into the right hand and open up into Vashistasana, side plank. So we're gonna work with a little bit of a different variation today. So keeping your outer edge of your right foot there on the ground, pick up your left leg Bend the left leg and touch your toes to the mat just behind your right leg. Stretch your left arm forward alongside your ear so the left fingertips reach toward the front of the room and then turn your heart toward the ceiling if you can. So like wild thing pose here. Good, you guys, take one more huge breath here as you open and bring it all the way back, plank pose. Your choice, down dog, or move through a chaturanga. 
cobra or up dog. Downward facing dog. Good, take a couple breaths here. And then extending your left leg back, reach it up. Feel for this three-legged downward facing dog, strong and lifted through your core. Bend your left leg, turn and open up your hip without losing ground or stability here. Good, take one more full breath. Step your left foot through into your low lunge. So your back knee will come down, hands up to your left thigh. Pull the ribs back, the belly stays strong, inner thighs engaged, integrity of the spine, stretch the arms up, get long through your torso here. And then same thing, we're gonna bend the elbows, goal post the arms, pull the shoulders down and back, squeeze inner thighs towards center, maybe deepen into the lunge some, and then turn the heart a little more open. Two more breaths here, everybody. Good, and then release the hands come down to the floor. Pick up your back knee, center that left knee over the ankle, right hand on the ground, just directly underneath the shoulder, and then spin, opening into your twist. So the left arm reaching up toward the ceiling. Hug toward that midline, and again, to take this a little bit further, you might Unweight your right hand and take your elbow over to the knee, coming into some version of prayer twist, opening up the chest. Take a couple more breaths here, maybe spread through the arms or open up a little bit more through the heart. Good, last breath here. Let's unwind out of that, hands to the floor, step the left foot back to plank and Pause. We're going to shift the weight into the left hand, roll to the outer edge of that left foot for Vashistasana. Pull your hips up, stretch up tall. Take the right arm forward alongside your ear, pick up your right foot, bend your leg, touch your toes behind the right, or excuse me, behind the left leg. And then you're going to turn the chest up toward the ceiling. Take another huge breath here, maybe a little more of a back bend in this wild thing pose. Good, you guys. All the way back, plank pose. Your choice, down dog, or move through that chaturanga. Beautiful job. Take another full breath here in your downward facing dog. Bend your knees and look forward. Step or hop forward toward the top of your mat. Lengthen out your spine as you inhale. Exhale, fold. Good, come all the way back up to standing. Ground your feet, stretch up. Reach tall and lift, and then hands together at the heart. Good, you guys. If you happen to have a block, I know not everybody has one, but if you happen to have one, you grab it and bring it in between your thighs. And if you don't have one, just imagine you did. Okay, we'll keep that same kind of hugging in engagement through the inner thighs. So your feet still parallel about the width of your hips. As you anchor down through your feet, squeeze inner thighs around the block, hugging toward that midline and stretch the arms up. Good, perfect. Interlace the fingers up top. So we're gonna draw index fingers up toward the ceiling. Squeeze like crazy around your block. 
and root down through your feet. And this is, at the same time, your tailbone is drawing slightly down. Take another full breath here. Reach up and over towards your right side. Keep squeezing your block or keep those legs strong. Shift your hips a little bit to your left. Good. Take this right arm down along your side or bring your hand to your hip. You're gonna stretch through the left arm and side body and turn the heart a little more open. Taking one more huge breath here. Good, you guys, bring it back up. Palms together, interlace the fingers, reach up, squeeze block, root down, and come up and over to your other side. The same thing here, getting into that right side body. Shift your hips a little bit to the right. Take your left arm down if you haven't already, or you can bring your hand to your hip, stretching through the right ribs and side body. And again, turn just a little more open here. Squeeze and then bring it back up. Beautiful job. Exhale, arms down. Hands come behind you. Now, keep your fingertips pointing down toward the glutes. Maybe a, a gentle bend in your knees. Squeeze your block if you've got it. Pull shoulder blades and elbows toward one another and lift up through your chest. That could be it. That could be your pose. Or you could start to lean it back just a little bit into the standing back bend. Give yourself a few breaths here. You don't have to push it. Try to keep your neck pretty neutral here. Take one more huge breath as you open and then bring it back up. Good, a slight bend in your knees, hands to your thighs. Take a breath here, and let's move through some, you can remove your block if you've got it, but move through some gentle cat-cow from this position. So the knees are a little bit bent, open the chest. As you inhale, round the spine, you can feel for that Uddiyana Bandha, navel to spine. Good. And then on your next exhale, let's go ahead and take it all the way down into a forward fold. Take one more breath here. And then extend to your flat back as you inhale and plant your hands, step or hop your way back. You can move through your chaturanga or skip it. That's up to you. Cobra or up dog, downward facing dog. Good, very nice. Extend your right leg back, reach it tall, long and lengthened. Bend your right leg, turn and lift your hip up. And go ahead and send your right foot through, coming into a high lunge or a crescent lunge. You're welcome to start with your hands on your thigh or on your hips, <clears throat> and then extending the arms up alongside the ears. Breathe here. Good. Now, I'd like for you to take your left arm behind your back. So the back of the hand rests on the, the low back, the small of the back, and presses down. Put a little bend in your back knee. Bend your right elbow. Hold the back of your head with your right hand and lean back just a little bit in this posture. So you've got the support of the hand behind your head. Take another full breath as you lean back maybe bending more through your back knee. Turn the heart one more degree up toward the ceiling. Good. Re-extend, bring both arms up and bring the hands down to the floor. Pick up your back 
leg coming into some version of standing splits. You can use a block here. Or maybe you take that right hand or forearm back behind your calf and fold it in. Feel your breath here, reaching up through those left toes. Good, you guys. Take another full breath here as you open. <clears throat> Gently step the left foot to the back of your mat. Turn your heel flat. Come up into a warrior two position. Okay, so adjust your feet as needed. We kind of, in warrior two, want the, the heel, the heels to be lined up. The hips are open. So starting to feel into an opening of the front of the pelvis and the hips. Take another full breath here. And then turn your palms up. So open up your palms, a little bend in your elbows. So allow the shoulders to move down a little bit. Deepen into that lunge some. And then drop your arms down. Clasp your hands behind you. Open up the shoulders and lift. And let's dive forward into this ostrich pose, or humble warrior, right shoulder toward the knee or to the inside of the right knee. And the left foot anchors down. A couple more breaths here, you guys. Continue to pull both thighs back. Let your neck go. Good. Make your way back up to warrior two. Keep that leg bent for just a moment. Take your right arm straight up. Remember the stretch we did at the beginning of practice? Bend your elbow, right elbow. Bring your left hand to your right elbow and give a little tug back. Stay in that lunge. You can keep it there or you could drop your left arm down and clasp your hands into arch your arms or at least move in that direction, okay? If, even if you can't quite clasp. This variation of reverse warrior. Good, notice your breath, you guys. Dig deep, take one more here. Deepen into the lunge, turn your heart more open and bring it back up to warrior two. Holy crap, straighten up your right leg and we'll come into triangle. So you can heel toe that back foot forward just a little bit if you'd like. Reach forward and bring that right hand down to the shin or the ankle. Or if you have a block here, a block is really handy here at the, out, the outside of the right foot. So <clears throat> again, from this place of grounding and stability, elongate your spine and see if you could turn your heart more open. If you had a light strap to the center of your chest, could you shine it more upward? Take another breath here. Good, you guys. Left arm will go behind the back. Let's gaze down at the floor and set up for Ardha Chandrasana or half moon pose. So rock your weight forward. You could always use a block here as well underneath that right hand. Now send your left arm up, reaching through those fingertips. If you're able, bend your left leg, see if you can catch the foot with the hand for half bow. Kick the foot away from the body, opening the heart. Awesome, you guys. Take another strong breath here. And let that go. Release and bring it all the way back to your lunge. Now the hands will root down, unweight your right leg, stretch it back behind you, reach it up, bend your leg and open and draw three big circles here with your right knee. Just moving through the right hip joint, getting some opening. You can go the other way if you want for a couple rounds. And then you're going to guide your right leg all the way through into pigeon. So right knee moves through. Now, <clears throat> stay upright for just a moment. Feel inner thighs pull toward that midline. And 
If you're able, bend your left leg. Coming into this quad stretch and drawing your left heel toward the glute. If that's not reasonable this morning, then skip it. A couple more breaths here. Good, and then let that foot go. Walk your hands forward. And just let the body <clears throat> really enjoy this stretch. And if pigeon and enjoy are <laughs> mutually exclusive, then maybe you switch up your pigeon. Okay, so you could come onto your back, you could take recline pigeon or double pigeon. Good, you guys, a couple more breaths here. Make your way back up. Hands root down, tuck your back toes under, stretch your right leg back. Reach it up, bend your right leg, turn and lift your hip, open this up. Now remember, wild thing pose. If you want to, you can unweight your right hand, flip your dog over and either come into that three-legged back bend or like we did before, anchor the outer left uh, foot to the floor and reach to the right fingertips coming into that wild thing pose. Take another breath. And all the way back, plank pose. You can move through a vinyasa here if you'd like. Cobra or up dog. And then downward facing dog. Good, you guys. Fantastic. Take another breath here. And then send your left leg back. Reach it up. Bend your leg and open through the hip. Left foot through for high lunge or crescent lunge. So take a moment to get here. You can always start with your hands on your hips or on your thigh and then send the arms up, reaching tall, squaring off the hips, feeling the integrity of this posture and then your right arm is going to go behind the back. Okay, so the finger or the back of the hand presses down. And then you're going to bend your left elbow, bring the hand to the back of the head, bend your back knee a little bit, and start to lean back into this posture, holding, cradling the back of the head, the hand. Two more breaths here. And again, see if you could open up the heart to the sky. Good, you guys. And then come back out. Re-extend the arms up. Hands to the floor for your standing split. So shift forward, pick up the right leg, reach through the toes, lengthening up. Maybe hold the back of your left calf with the hand. Good. Root down firmly through that left foot, strong through your standing leg. Take one more breath, float that right leg up. Good, and then step it back to a warrior two. So ground your back heel, line up your heels on your yoga mat, strong lunge, and take the arms out. Breathe here, take a moment just to arrive and establish your stability and your focus. Maybe slow your breath down a little bit. Turn your palms up. Slight bend in the elbows, uplift of the heart. Awesome, take your arms down and clasp behind you. Good, ostrich pose, shoulders back, 
cacti forward, keeping your left toes pointing forward, your right foot rooted to the back of the mat, and the head down toward the ground. Continue to pull the thighs back and breathe here, everybody. Good, and then make your way back, upright, warrior two, and then take your left arm straight up. Bend your elbow, hand to the upper back. Right hand to left elbow. Stay in that warrior two stance and pull back. Good, maybe that's your pose. Or take your right arm down, maybe clasp your hands or reach toward that clasp in archer arms. Two more breaths here, you guys. See if you can draw that left knee forward a little bit. Open your heart and then unwind out of that. Straighten up the left leg. Heel toe that back foot forward just a little bit, setting up for Utita Trikonasana Triangle Pose. Reach forward, keep the torso long as you come into this triangle. Good. Reach toward the sky with the right fingertips. Keep the spine long and lengthened. And again, that same analogy of having a light strapped to the center of your chest, can you turn just a little more open? Beautiful. Take that right arm behind your back, setting up for standing balance, half moon. So shift your weight forward onto that left foot and extend the right arm up. This may, might be where you stay or bend your top leg, your right leg, feel for, for the foot coming into that half bow. Good, you guys, last full breath here in your balance. Turn your chest more open and release out of that. Send it back to your lunge. Now the weight moves into the hands. The left leg stretches back behind you and up. Bend your left leg, turn and open through your hip and draw three large circles here with your left knee moving through that hip joint. You can take a couple the other way. And then let's guide the left knee into pigeon. Any version of pigeon that suits you. If you're in this basic one, bend your back leg if that's available to you and grab a hold of your foot. So heel toward the glute, feeling into that quad stretch, opening up the shoulder and lifting through the heart. Good, last full breath here. Let the foot go and then walk your hands forward. Settling into that pigeon stretch. And again, can you move into a version that is enjoyable to you? So maybe that means you recline or come to your upright Double pigeon. Good, everybody, take one more breath here. Start to make your way back upright. And tuck your back toes under and stretch this left leg back. Reach it up. Bend your left leg and open. Maybe flip your down dog over. 
into a three-legged back bend or that wild thing pose where we keep the right leg straight, balance on the outer edge of that right foot, touch those left toes to the floor and arch back, reaching through the left arm and the fingertips. Look back past your left hand if you can. Take one more breath. Bring it all the way back. Plank pose. Good. You can choose chaturanga or straight to downward dog. Awesome, you guys. All right, come down to your knees. You can just come to hero's pose or any seated position. Take a, take a rest. How's it going? These hour-long classes are like, pisses me off, excuse me. Okay, so as promised, Mary Jo, we're gonna do an inversion. But I think I would like to open it up to whatever you wanna do. So um, I define an inversion as any pose that elevates the hips higher than the heart, okay? So technically this could be like bridge pose supported bridge with a block. Um, it could be down dog for, you know, for that matter. Um, but but we, you could also work with headstand, handstand, forearm balance. You go to a wall. Um, I can't spot you, but I can, <laughs> I can watch and judge. <laughs> so. You guys at home, I can't see what the hell you're doing, so do whatever you want, I guess. All right, so why don't we take a, a little bit and work with headstand, or inversion. Um, I'll go ahead and talk us through headstand, because I think that's the, probably the most accessible. Um, but if you want to work with something else or shift to a wall, please feel free to do that, okay? Sound good? Anything upside down? So if you're working with headstand, and let's drop down to the forearms, the elbows. Grab a hold of opposite biceps. So this will arrange your elbows pretty much shoulder width apart, which is what we want. We want to create a tripod. And then uh, clasp the hands, interlace the fingers. I like to open up the palms, the heels of the hands, so my hands are like a basket. Bring the top of the head to the floor and hold the back of the head like a basket. And you're gonna push the head into your hands, the hands back into your head and root through your elbows. Shoulders draw away from the ears. Pick up your knees so you're starting to put the weight into the forearms and the top of the head. Tiptoe forward toward your face. Make sure your chin is away from your chest and you've got that C curve at the back of the neck, the cervical curve. Take one leg up and hold the back of the head with the hands, and as you do that, really use your core and the foot will float away from the ground. Again, feel free to use a wall. Coming up into your headstand. You can point your toes or flex your feet back. I kind of like to flex my feet back. Find your balance. And you can take one leg back at a time. Tiptoe back out, come to your knees and rest in child's pose. Okay. Ooh, I like all the variety going on here. Headstand, handstand. Awesome. Child's pose. <laughs> Good, you guys. So, awesome, David, I love that. You can kind of finish up with whatever you're doing. There is no rush. And then when you do feel ready, we'll make our way onto our backs.
Good. Awesome, Julie. Make our way on to our backs and set up for bridge pose. And so bringing the soles of the feet to the ground about hip width apart. And you can just reach down and just barely touch the backs of your heels with your fingertips. Bend your elbows, point the fingertips up toward the ceiling like robot arms. And we're gonna push back of head and shoulder blades, elbows and feet to the floor as we puff up the heart. So don't lift your hips up quite yet, but see if you can just lift from your sternum toward the ceiling. You'll feel the low back lift and arch away from the floor here. Push with your feet and now lift your pelvis up without tucking the tailbone too much, keeping that curve in the lumbar spine. We don't want to flatten that out. Root down and lift up through your chest. You can always use a block between the thighs here or just imagine that you had one, that same hugging in toward center line. And keep working the breath here. You're welcome to drop the arms down, maybe interlace the fingers underneath you if you like that version. Shimmy your shoulder blades a little bit closer to one another and maintain that uplift of the heart. If you're feeling really inspired here to move into full wheel, full back bend, you could place the hands next to your ears, come up onto the top of the head and straighten up the arms, come into that full back bend. Okay, that is not required, but if you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Let's give this three to five more breaths. Good, we're gonna go ahead and lower it all the way back down. Hug both knees toward your chest and rock side to side. And then let's grab a hold of the feet for a happy baby pose. And pulling the knees down toward the outer ribs and lengthening the tailbone and the sacrum down toward the floor. And then release out of that. Let's hug the knees back in and let both knees drop to the left. So you're coming into a spinal twist. Extend that right arm out to the right. And maybe drop your head to your right. Take one more deep cleansing breath here. Knees come back up and just gently move to the other side. Knees to the right, stretch your left arm out. Maybe turn your head to your left. One more cleansing breath here. And then you can bring your knees back in and 
Let the body stretch out for Shavasana, corpse pose. Take your time to get there. If there's any last little sequence or anything that you'd like to do before settling in, please take the time to do that.
begin to expand your breath here into the belly, into the heart. And with gratitude for this moment to rest, to be still and at ease. You can start to move as you're ready, making your way over to your side. And then back up to your seat. And your next in breath, let's go ahead and reach the arms all the way up. And hands gather the heart. With this invitation to all of us that we might become more compassionate beings, let's finish our practice with one round of Om. Take a full breath in. Um, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, dear ones. Thank you.